PWM signal generation using CCP model of peak microcontroller. CCP is capture, compare and PWM model of peak microcontroller. This is a block diagram to explain operation of PWM generation. This PWM signal we can use to control speed of DC motor or to control the intensity. So this PWM or CCP model uses timer 2. So this is TMR2 resistor that is timer 2 resistor and this is a period resistor PR2 resistor and CCP R1L resistor is used in this PWM model which is used to store the count related to duty cycle. For example, suppose we want to generate this PWM signal then count related to frequency or T time period T of this signal PWM signal should be stored in PR2 resistor and count related to T on that is related to duty cycle should be stored in resistor CCP R1L. The PWM signal will be generated at RC2 pin of peak microcontroller. So initially this RC2 terminal will be at logic 1 level and TMR2 resistor is initialized with 00H. After each clock cycle when we will turn on timer 2 contents of TMR2 will be incremented by 1. So it will increment its content after each clock cycle. This comparator first compare contents of TMR2 with contents of CCP R1L resistor which will be copied into CCP R1H resistor by microcontroller. User has to load count in CCP R1L resistor only. So initially first TMR2 contents will be compared with CCP R1H resistor and when this both contents are equal signal will given to uh, signal will be given to reset pin of this flip flop so this output will reset to zero so this t on period is related to count which is stored in ccp r1h resistor now output is low and this comparator second comparator start comparing now contents of tmr2 with the contents of stored in PR2 resistor. When both these contents will be equal, comparator will set this flip flop that is to contents of PR2 value, then output will switch from logic 0 to logic 1 because this signal is given to set terminal of flip flop. So this cycle will be again repeated. The contents of CCP R1L will be copied into CCP R1H resistor. Then after doing first cycle, TMR2 contents will be again initialized to 00H and the whole cycle will be repeated. So resistors required for PWM generation. The first is T2 con resistor which is timer 2 control resistor. The first 4 bits of T2 con resistors are related to post scalar value. We are not going to use post scalar so we will initialize these bits to 0. Then TMR2 on bit is used to turn timer 2 on. So initially we will keep timer 2 on and when we want to turn this timer 2 on will set this bit to 1. These two bits are used for prescaler. So we are going to use prescaler 16. So this bit should be 1 and then don't care. So we'll initialize it to with value 1 and 0. So we can initialize T2 con resistor with value 0 0 0 0. This bit is don't care, so it is also 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we can convert into hex or we can write it in binary like 0, B and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Next resistor we have to initialize is CCP1 con resistor that is CCP1 control resistor. So in this resistor, 
these four beads are used to select mode means whether you want to use compare mode capture mode or pwm mode of ccp model since we want to use pwm mode this bit should be 1 1 and this two should be in don't care condition so we'll initialize don't care condition with value 0 so this four bits should be 1 1 0 0 these two bits are used for a decimal point fraction of these two bits are used to store decimal point fraction of duty cycle suppose duty cycle value is 10.0 then you can store 00, 0 if decimal point fraction is 0 then here 00, 0 can be stored if decimal point fraction for example is 0.25 then you can store here 0, 01 if it is 0 0.5 for example 10.5 then you can store here 1 0 and if decimal point fraction is 0 0.75 then we can store here 1 1 so decimal point fraction of duty cycle can be stored using this two bits the next register is ccp r1 l register which is used to store integer part of duty cycle that means suppose duty cycle is 10.0 then 10 should be stored in this register count related to 10 and since it is 0, 0.0 this two bits will be 0, 0 now the calculations to find a count which should be stored in PR2 register and CCP R1L register in PR2 register count related to frequency of PWM signal is stored so the formula for calculation of count stored in PR2 is equal to oscillator frequency that is crystal frequency divided by PWM signal frequency output signal frequency multiplied by 4 multiplied by capital N minus 1 here capital N is prescalar value in our case we are considering prescalar as 16 so value of n is 16 so suppose oscillator frequency value is 20 megahertz that is crystal is of 20 megahertz and we want to generate a pwm signal with frequency of 5 kilohertz then count related to this frequency should be stored in pr2 register and that will be equal to 20 into 10 raised to power 6 since output PWM frequency is 5 kilohertz so 5 into 10 raised to power 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by n that is prescalar count is 16 this is approximately equal to 61 in decimal so 61 in decimal we can store in register PR2 which is related to frequency of oscillator now suppose we want to generate PWM signal with duty cycle of 10% so 10% duty cycle then count related to duty cycle should be stored in CCP R1 L register so that will be equal to 10% of this total count 61 so into 10 divided by 100 so that will be nearly equal to 6.1 if you want you can store decimal point as 0 so we will consider it approximate as 6 so 6 in decimal should be stored in CCP R1 L register with duty cycle of 10% similarly for any value of duty cycle we can find this count and that should be stored in CCP R1 L register now embedded C program to generate a PWM signal so first we'll include header file of PIC microcontroller so depends upon which PIC microcontroller you are using you have to include this file then we'll write main function so void main 
here also I will write wide first we have to decide direction of port pin RC2 RC2 pin we are going to use to generate a PWM signal so that should be used as a output pin so to decide direction of RC2 pins we will initialize trace resistor or trace bit of C2 pin so that should be 0 so RC2 pin is used as an output pin next is initialize resistor so we will initialize CCP1 con resistor that is CCP1 control resistor and as we have seen the value should be stored as 0000, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. that is select PWM mode and we will use decimal fraction as 0 the next is store initialize T2 con resistor so T2 con resistor should be initialized with value 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 that we are using prescaler as 16 then initialize PR2 resistor which is related to frequency of PWM signal so we have to initialize PR2 resistor with the frequency calculation as 61 in decimal so 61 mm -hmm. is stored in PR2 resistor then in CCP1 CCP R1L resistor we have to load a count related to duty cycle so if we consider 10% duty cycle so nearly equal to 6 we have to load in CCP R1L resistor so this is all about the initialization now we will write our program in while one loop so in while one we will first clear TMR2 IF flag which will be set after complete operation of timer 2 then initialize this TMR2 resistor with value 0 and it will start increments its count after each clock cycle so initially TMR2 should be initialized to 0 then we will turn on this timer TMR2 on bit should be set to 1 to turn timer on and when this interrupt flag will be set to 1 it indicates that one cycle of PWM signal is generated so that one cycle operation is completed and again we have to clear this flag clear this TMR2 resistor and turn timer on so for that we will check this timer flag so we will use while loop while TMR2 IF is equal to 0 if this condition is true continuously execute this while instruction if condition is false come out of this while loop and again execute this instruction so this program will generate a PWM signal to change the frequency of PWM signal we have to change this count and to change duty cycle we have to change this count which is stored in CCP R1 L resistor.